it's Essa Barrett. I was just on the Zach Sang show. We talked about my new single, Counting Crimes, and my upcoming EP and life in general. Um, so yeah, watch it if you want to. Um, yeah, we're cool. So yeah. Let's do this. Hello, beautiful human. My name is Zach. That is Dan. Hello. And we welcome to the studio, Nessa Barrett. Hey. Hi. (laughs) (laughs) I never know what to say. Like, in the beginning, I'm so, like, awkward. I'm like, hey. Yeah, I don't know what to do either. Like, do we clap? Do we, like, what do we do? Woo! There should be, like, confetti. Can't. Wow, yeah. that's a lot, yeah. but also a mess. But I kind of like, yeah. But I like the idea. It's it's exciting. It's ooh. yeah. It's exciting until like you start seeing like random like little confettis everywhere for like the next year. Exactly. Yeah, they and, never go away. And then my dog's gonna come in, and eat it. And then it's gonna show up in his poop. It's gonna be a whole cycle. Yeah. The yeah. confetti <laughs> cycle is gonna live forever. Confetti poop. That's so funny. <laughs> By the way, that would be a really good product. Imagine that you ingest something, and then on the other end, poof. It's actually uh, pretty and, and nice. No. Oh, yeah, like pink glitter. Imagine, mm. like, you can drink something before you and it's like pink <laughs> glitter poop. <laughs> I think it's a good idea. I don't know. I'll do it. I'll I, invent it. I think we need to take this to Shark Tank. <laughs> I know. I really do think <laughs> like, so. Like yesterday. Yeah. Imagine mm. pitching that. Wow. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, that's a good idea, guys. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> or we could take it to one of your v- your friends have those VC funds over there at the the hype house, you know, or something like that. They mm. in- they invest in things. Dude, I've n- I have no idea about investing anything. I'm just like I'm just gonna get money and then spend it because I don't really know how to invest in anything. Do you have a spending problem? Yes. Okay. <laughs> By the way, I can smell you from here, and rumor has it you have a six hundred and fifty dollars stench yes. surrounding you. Yeah. Wow. Um, I take a lot of pride in my smell. I don't know what it is. My mom's always been like that when it's like our house need like vanilla scented candles it's like a big thing but um i don't know i have like major ocd with my scent like my breath and my smell so yeah have you ever been around or been around recently somebody who smells because masks are (laughs) off now (laughs) no thank god thank god and i I, even if i did i'm not gonna expose anyone so (laughs) i don't want to think about it okay you may not expose them publicly but would you tell them privately in a setting like just say hey Hey. You know, like, that, like, nice, like, gesture of, like, hey, I got, like, extra gum. You want it? You know? Yes. Mm-hmm. Or, like, hug them a lot. That way, like, my perfume rubs off on them. Oh, it's yeah. very caring. Yeah. Very kind. <laughs> By the way, it's really good to see you in person. The last you time too. we saw you was over a screen. And we have a lot of music to discuss, obviously. There's a new single, a new music video. So much going on in your life. So much. Um, and I think I saw you from afar one time when I showed up to some house, some big glass house. You were, you were, like, somewhere, and, you know, and I was there, but, yeah. like, it wasn't a party or anything. It's, like, the middle of a Tuesday. It was really, there was a lot of dogs running around. Yeah. We don't, we don't speak of that house. Okay, God. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry. Okay. God. I'm should. kidding, I'm what kidding. Happened? I what know house? what house that was. I know. Yeah, there was a transformer in the living room. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 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 oh yeah, we interviewed. Yeah, yeah, we interviewed Jaden, and that transformer was in the background the whole time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. okay, okay. But, but I do think that was the last time I saw you in person, in the flesh, and that was. I don't know summer. if I even knew that you were there. No, you yeah, probably not. Pro- yeah, <laughs> I would. I would have said hey, but <laughs> hey, yeah, just like that, and that's it. <laughs> no, I would. I would have talked to you, but I don't know. I was probably crying. Honestly, I spent a lot of days at that house crying. That's not healthy. Yeah, I know. Thank God we don't go there anymore. Does that, <laughs> does the pain that comes from those experiences make its way into the music? Of course. Yeah, all the time. I mean, even in that those moments, like, do you do you tap into uh, the collection of those moments that you carry with you? Or when it hits a fan at that house and tears start flowing, do you go to a studio and figure it out? Or what's the process like? I don't know. I mean, yeah, I go to the studio as much as I can. And, like, but if I can't go to the studio, I'll just... At that house, I would go up to the rooftop, mm. you know. That's where I saw you. Weirdly enough, I was down <laughs> below. <laughs> Did that make sense? And I was <laughs> maybe, maybe I was like, I don't know. Maybe I was like vibing. I, I always write lyrics up there, so what? possibly. Bad memories come from that house or good because art came out of it? Um, I think I never regret anything. 
because you can always make something out of bad stuff. So I would say uh, good, just because future music is amazing, thanks to it. But yeah. Where are you at? I mean, obviously, Counting Crimes is a new single, but is it a start for a new era? What, what, what does it signify to you? Yeah, I mean, I think Counting Crimes really is the start to, like, a new me and, like, a new chapter. Um, I just feel like I have changed as a person and grown so much. Like, I mean, like, I moved out to L.A. when I was 17. Now I'm 18, about to turn 19. And, like, musically, too, like, I feel like I finally, like, found my voice. And, like, Counting Crimes was kind of, like, the start of me figuring out exactly what direction I want to go in music. Um, And, yeah. I find your story so amazing. One, because you are a fellow New Jerseyan. Yes. I am also (laughs) from New Jersey. (laughs) I do believe with every fiber of my being that New Jersey is the greatest state in the nation. Mm. Dirty Um, Jers, we love it. Dirty (laughs) Jers for life. Ready for this? I'm thinking about getting a tattoo of New Jersey, but as a pizza slice. So that is a, sick. An outline of the, the state, but it's a pizza slice. That's sick. I actually love that. I'm all for tattoos, but I think I think that's great. I've never gotten a tattoo. I have a fear of commitment, but you know what? I commit to New Jersey forever. Do you know what's so funny? Why? <laughs> I was getting tattoos at 10 a.m. this morning. What? what, what? Where? What? <laughs> why? <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, that was my morning. I, I, I woke up, got tattoos, had therapy, got out of therapy, got more tattoos, got ready, came here. Wow, you're a... F- Rockstar, <laughs> what's good? They're like they're all up my arm. Are, so are it's, are we in process? Oh, I oh, mean, damn. I Look think we're I think we're getting there. Yeah, the the gloves are a big casual. Yeah, but like we're getting there. Oh wow! What'd you um, get this morning? Yeah, I got I got this tooth this morning. I got like this skeleton thing. I got like something back here. What? What's I got a few of my like chest area. They're like hands. Yeah, I got like six today. Wait. Why 10 a.m. on a Wednesday? Um, <laughs> okay, so like there's like this like, okay, so my tattoo artist, Maddie, shout out to her. She's amazing. Um, But I'm very lazy and don't feel like going to the shop. So whenever she's like free, which are like only like Tuesdays and Wednesdays, <laughs> uh, she'll come over to like my house and she'll like spend hours with me just like, tattoo and so um i saw her like last wednesday and last tuesday and um got like probably like a total of 20 tattoos and then i was like i need more when can you come back she was like wednesday and i was like frick i'm busy because i had this i was you know just come in the morning (laughs) (laughs) so the flow (laughs) no no i love it i love it I don't know. I think it's kind of like cool that I just like wake up and it's time to get tatted. <laughs> so, do you put a lot of thought into what you're gonna get, or does she kind of come over and you're like, "Yeah, let's do a tooth today." Yeah, the tooth thing was very impulsive. I, I've seen like a lot of like tooth tattoos on people, and I was like, "Oh, they're sick." But like, I have like a lot of words and like numbers that like have like secret meanings and like a lot of stuff that are very deep, and I think it's cool. And mostly, like, I'm the only one that knows what, like, the meanings are, like, the true meanings behind my tattoos, but um, they're sick, and I kind of, I like it. Because, like, they're out for, like, everyone to see, you know, if they can see them, but they don't know what they mean, except for me. So, it's, like, it's really cool. Is it wrong of me to ask what the 2222 means? Three twos? It's an angel number. I like it. I also love the number two. What is it about two? (laughs) Those ones aren't really deep. The 777 one is super deep because I saw it all the time. You see the number. Mm-hmm. Like, when you, like, look at, like, I don't, like, yeah. I would just, like, see it on, like, my phone randomly. Or if I would, like, go down, like, through channels, like, to, like, on my TV, I'd randomly just, like, see that 777. It's, like, weird. Like, signs everywhere. I don't know. Like, do you ever get, like, drawn to looking at something randomly, like, as, like, your day goes? Like like where I just come in contact with like the same thing pretty repetitively. Yeah. Uh, not really. Oh, or I maybe feel like I, don't I do know. all the time. So it's like every time I open up my phone, I see one, two, three, four, or like eleven, eleven, always. And that's why I have eleven, eleven tattooed on me. 
Well, I just Googled what does 777 mean. It says 777 is a lucky number because it's supposed to bring luck and change into your life. Oh, that's perfect. And I'm pretty sure that's also why I got it. And I totally forgot the meaning. But, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I also got it like a really like dark time. And I was like, I need something to like keep me reminded I wanna, that, yeah. That's fascinating because I think your whole life is kind of rooted in like kind of random change, right? You were going to be a soccer player. You wanted to go Division One, and then that goes away because of a you got hurt, right? Yeah, yeah, eight concussions. So what? now I'm here. But look, we love it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like what the? F- I know, so crazy. I feel like everything in my life is so odd, and I do really think it's luck like I mean I don't know like I just feel lucky and it sucks because sometimes I take away the fact that like maybe I do deserve something for the fact like that maybe I just got lucky but um yeah it's crazy you know I feel like life and career is based on a combination of Luck and consistent hard work. Mm -hmm. Like, obviously, things fell into a certain place to start something, but that doesn't mean it it just is kept. It doesn't sustain on luck. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. It sustains on you. It grows on you. It evolves because of you. Yeah. Um, But I get it because, like, yeah, it's wild to think that you've gone from New Jersey playing soccer, ready to go to college, to waking up at 10 a.m. on a Wednesday to get a bunch of tattoos. <laughs> in L.A., yeah. And you have crazy. diamonds in your teeth, dude. Yeah, I do. One's a Playboy bunny. Of course. <laughs> Duh. I'm so extra. I'm not realizing. <laughs> Are those in there permanently or can you take them out? I can take them out. Okay. I've had, like, more, but they've, like, fallen off as, like, I would, like, eat an apple and it's like, oh, they're gone. It's like braces. <laughs> Lost my Playboy bunny yeah. and my Granny Smith. <laughs> Hello, beautiful human. Yes, now that we are out and about like normal people, we're taking photos. We're capturing memories. And the best way to really capture and cherish a memory is to make it tangible. And the easiest way to make something tangible is by going to myphoto.com. It's that easy. And it literally takes two minutes to make, and the product is awesome. You're going to get your own unique photo brought to life in, in a form that can go on your wall or it can go on a shelf. I love the photo cubes. I'm also really into uh, being able to print these photos on glass. I've been hanging them up in my office. Uh, They just make me happy. Seeing my photos in real life, it just uh, takes the memory to a totally, totally new level. Myphoto.com, very easy to use. I promise, I promise you're going to enjoy your time. You're going to be able to put your photos on acrylic, glass, metal, and more. And I really do love the photo cubes. It looks like your photo is kind of floating in the air. MyPhoto.com, use my name, Zach, and uh, yeah, you'll get 20% off your first order. And by the way, you can make things for as little as 12 bucks. Come on, MyPhoto.com. Use my name, Zach, when you're checking out, you get 20% off, and their products start at $12, so there's something for everybody. Oh, and you'll get your order in five days, so it comes quick. MyPhoto.com. Do you see yourself as a rock star? I would love to think that I am. How does one become a rock star? Is it based on public perception and public, like, does somebody, like, does the crowd knight you a rock star? Or do you have to know that you're a rock star in order for people to be like, you're a rock star? I have, I have no idea. I think it's all about kind of how you go about yourself. Mm-hmm. And to me, I feel like I am what other people see me as because I don't really know who I am when I look at myself and I feel like, I mean, everything that's been going on recently is, like, so surreal that, like, I can't even comprehend all of my, like, achievements and, like, how far I've come. Um, So it's, like, I feel like when I'm, like, when I'm me, I I don't really feel like anything but myself. So, I mean, if if you were to call me a rock star, I'd be like, okay, that's cool. I guess I'm a rock star, but, yeah. What fuels the need to get a bunch of tattoos? Is it a want to turn your body into art? That and coping. Um, I used to have some very unhealthy, negative ways to cope. And um, for me, tattoos were the closest to that that can leave like a permanent um, mark on my body that represents something beautiful, you know, so instead of like a scar. How does music play into that? 
does it at all. I feel like pain was like your introduction onto the scene. So yeah, <laughs> it covers a really it covers a real story. No, yeah, totally. I mean, it, pain is pain, <laughs> <laughs> but um, like I mean, like I will draw inspiration for my tattoos from my music or music itself, or I will draw inspiration for my music from my tattoos. Like I have an EP coming out. And I got the title of my EP just by looking at my arm and looked at one of my tattoos and I was like, this is it. So it's pretty wild that you turn this want for maybe initially like, like, right, like when you talk about tattoos replacing the scars, right? Like mm -hmm. you're essentially like turning that want into a piece of art that's with you that can even go on to create more art or yeah. serve as a in constant inspiration. Yeah. Yeah, and I think, too, it, like, it gives you kind of, like, some, like, control back, you know? Like, I can, like, choose to put whatever I want on my body and it'll stay there permanently. And that's, like, some control that I can hold, like, within myself when, like, I can't really control a lot of other things in life. So it's just, like, a lot of things that come into play, but I, I love them. And, like, yeah, I think it's fun. What's <laughs> something that you can't control that you wish you could? Myself. <laughs> <laughs> That sounds so stupid, but like low key. Um, other people probably the weather. There's a lot of things. <laughs> <laughs> like if I like really good hair one day, I'm having a great hair day, and like go out and it's like humid out. I could have controlled it, you know. How dare Mother Nature? Yeah, I know she hates me. <laughs> she hates seeing me succeed. <laughs> what What is the name of the EP that you got from your tattoo? Pretty poison. Pretty poison. Yeah. What does that you? mean? Uh, Sorry. That's okay. It's amazing. Um, but, <laughs> so, I don't know if anyone's going to understand what I'm saying by this because I feel like I think so broad and, like, in-depth in, like, a really, like, weird way. But my EP, obviously, is it's the most personal music that I've ever made in my life. It's the most me in, like, any of my projects. And so... um. The title Pretty Poison kind of represents my life, you know, and I feel like I have a huge following and I get so many comments saying like, oh, like, I wish I were like you. I wish I like lived your life, whatever, like you're so lucky, but like kind of like the idea of Pretty Poison itself, you know, you don't, it seems so beautiful on the outside, but until you're in it, it's so, it's poison. And that's kind of how my life is. And I truly do believe that no one really could walk a day in my shoes if they were me or could have made it this far if any was, anyone else was me but myself uh, because I feel like I've gone through a lot and continue to. And, um, yeah, so it's just kind of just the fact that, like, everything just seems so beautiful and perfect on the outside, but inside it's, like, very ugly. And a lot of people have that same reality. I think a lot mm -hmm. of people who are in the public sphere in any sense. Yeah, 100%. Um, and it sucks because a lot of people don't really see that, you know, especially when you have a huge following on something like social media. It's, they see you as a figure on a screen rather than a human being that has a life. And life is full of so many layers and is... There's just, like, so much depth to it that you can never catch on a picture or a 15-second video or, like, a live stream or a music video or even, like, music sometimes, you know? How do you balance Instagram, tiktok -y with the real you? Or is it the same? I, I would say it's the same. Um, obviously, I hide all the ugly parts as much as I can, but, you know, I feel like, I just, like, post as myself, but, like, posting is just, like, posting, you know, you want people to see what you want them to see, and then the rest is kind of hidden, and you're left to deal with it on your own, yeah. What is your relationship like with social media these days? Do you spend time on it, or do you try to avoid it? Um, recently, I've struggled with it a lot. I felt like it was bringing my mental health down a ton, um... And it just got to the point where, like, I would just go on an app and just instantly cry from something that I saw. It was terrible. Um, 
So I took a about a month of a break from it, and I had my team post for me, or like uh, my manager will have my Instagram on her phone, and then I would just like when she was with me and I wanted to post something, I'll just post it and then uh, just give her her phone back. Um, and yeah, so I still kind of have like a team that's posting for me. And then if I'm up to posting myself or if, you know, I'm like feeling okay mentally, then I'm able to go on when I want. But I do have a team that posts for me as well. Do you evolve or grow or how are you impacted by taking a month off of Instagram or social media? I feel like it's been a huge impact. I've realized that like this is life and on there is not, you know, I think when you're on there 24 seven, um, or at least like even like every day you start to think that everything that's said on there that like you see on there is reality and it takes you so far out of life itself. And, um, I dissociate all the time, honestly, like randomly, like I'll be at a dinner. I was at a dinner last night with my manager and my lawyer and I was like dissociating, like sitting there. But, um, that just like made me dissociate even more. And, um, I think, it was just like a nice cleanse. I feel like everyone kind of needs something like that. Is it hard at all to think that something that gave you so much could also be so gross and hurtful? Because really the internet gave you, without the internet we wouldn't be sitting here. No, yeah. I mean, it's like, it. that's pretty poison, you know? Yeah. It's like, it has gave me so much and I owe everything to it. I'm so grateful. Um, but there are a lot of negatives that come with a lot of good and... Um, it takes a while for you to start to notice them and see them. But when you do, it hits hard. And it's very crazy. How have you, it seems like you're doing a very good job of shedding the influencer social media star image and having people focus on the music. How have you been able to do that so well? I think it just came very like easily and like natural to me because I never wanted to be an influencer. You know, I've been so influenced by music my entire life. And I've always loved singing um, all the time. And, like, my dad, you know, I have recorded, like, a song in, in like, a booth when I was, like, four. So, like, I've been heavily involved with music. And it's always been my passion and my dream. Um, And, like, social media influencer never really was because I... I don't really, like, want to, like, influence people because, like, I'm still learning. I'm 17 years old. You know, I know I'm going to make mistakes. um, And I can, like, give people as much advice as I can. But, like, I am still, like, struggling mentally and, like, going through my own thing. Like, I just started therapy again, like, not too long ago. And um, I just feel like there was a lot of pressure that came with that. And I never was built for that. And I always knew I was. And my platform grew, like, randomly. I feel like I never really strived to do things for clout, for money, for followers. I was just being myself and posting as a normal teenage girl. Um, But, yeah, and it brought me here so that now I can do music. And so I think that's just kind of what helped my transition I think too I've always been so like authentic and real that um I never really was like fake you know I never had like a split persona like on Mm -hmm. social media and then like off like I am me and so is my music so yeah partner in crime crimes plural because that's the point of the song (laughs) right is that you've done things wrong but like your partner's done way more Mm -hmm. you know you both have done wrong but the wrongs are much more steep on their side yep Great concept for a record. Thank you. Really, really good. Thank you. How how does this song come to be? I just think that, you know, I had La Di Die, Pain, If You Love Me, pretty depressing (laughs) songs because I I am a pretty depressing person, you know. Um, But there is a moment where, you know, I grew older and I realized that it's okay to go through some bad stuff. It's all about kind of the energy that you have towards it. And, like, counting crimes really is, like, having that bad energy after, like, coming out of a toxic relationship. And, like, knowing, like, admitting that, like, you've had your wrongs, 
but knowing that the other person has done way worse. So, um, I mean, yeah. And again, like, I mean, everything's from experience. So. But do you t- two wrongs make a right? No, never. But in this case, I mean, it kind of justifies it, right? If it- A little bit, a little bit. But I think, like, when you're in a toxic relationship, it's toxic for a reason. You know, it takes two people to be in a relationship. Mm-hmm. Um, and sometimes one person can maybe, like, influence um, a side of you to come out that wasn't really there, you know, um, and kind of influence you to do wrong things because of how they're treating the relationship itself. Um, but also everyone's human. So like, I think it'd be silly to say that you've never done anything wrong, you know? Mm -hmm. And, um, I feel like you could say that, like, you're perfect in a relationship, but there will always be, like, one thing that maybe um, you have your flaws in. And, um, but, yeah, I mean, I that's kind of where I take it. But, yeah, the other person totally is (laughs) doo-doo. The CP, I mean, you're telling a story here. Is Is it your story? It's the story of what you've been going through for the last, how long? Probably, like, six months. Until now, yeah, I'm like, yeah, really until now. I mean, these, like, there's, like, some songs on there that are, I mean, they're all, like, we made them maybe, like, a month ago. Um, wow. Or more, possibly. But um, it's so real. But it's, like, the journey through, like, my last six months with relationships, like, love, myself, Um, social media, Um, it just took every aspect of my life that I was struggling with in the last six months and put it into a song, well, multiple songs, but yeah. What does that mean? Does it help you heal? Does that, what what, what do you feel? It does help me heal a lot, and it does give me closure, in a sense, um, with myself, you know. It's just, there's just something so therapeutic about, feeling uh so intensely about something and being so hurt um and bothered by it and then being able to kind of write it down on a piece of paper and create a beautiful song out of it and kind of just wash it like watch it wash away you know and um every time I listen to the songs I feel like I gain something from it um but it was it's like a goodbye from a chapter, but yeah. And we're going in six month increments. So this EP is done a hundred percent. Everything's pretty close to being finalized, mixed and mastered. I think, um, I just have to record my vocals for the outro. Um, and then I'll be done. Sick. <laughs> I'm like making sure I don't say anything wrong. <laughs> So you, I think you said earlier that counting crimes is kind of like you really figuring out who you are. So how would you describe Lottie Die leading into that? Was that like was that an experiment? Was that you like a bridge into this? Yeah, I mean, I think um, Lottie Die was such a fun song to make, just because I never really branched out to that like pop punk type of vibe um, musically. And so I I always listen to it all the time and I think it was really fun and cool to make it. Um, And there's just something that's just so raw about it that I've always been attracted to and drawn to, but I've never, you know, like wrote a song that like was like pop punk um, or ever like sang a song like that Mm -hmm. other than like I Miss You by Blink-182 and like I'm crying in my room, but (laughs) um, it was so fun to make and it was cool and I just love you know creating music I hate really like sticking myself into a box and saying that this is the genre that I make you know like this is the type of music that I create but I just kind of make whatever feels right to me in the moment and what fits um and at that time it did and um it was fun and it was it was really cool and 
I don't know. I also do think, like, even, like, in my EP and, like, future music, like, there's a lot of elements from that genre that I am now adding into my new stuff without it feeling like it. But there's there's a, a vibe that um, I've taken from, like, creating La Dee Die, kind of. And, yeah. Would you say you're a part of the new pop punk scene? Um, I think La Dee Die really did push that scene. Um along with like Jaden and like MGK and you know Kenny Hoopla and like all these stuff I think Travis is freaking And incredible. Travis is Travis is incredible, you know. Um he makes everything perfect. I don't even know how the man does it, but he has like a secret touch and he just like put it on Lottie Die and it was insane. Um but yeah, I mean, I would say that Lottie Die was a part of that new scene. Me myself, I don't know because Again, like, I don't really want to stick myself into that genre. I think, I don't, I don't even know. I'm just going to say I make, like, Nessa music. Because I don't even, like, know where I fit at this point. But, um, yeah. And that's okay, right? Yeah. Like, <laughs> let it go where it goes. I believe in no genres. <laughs> yep. Genreless, baby. <laughs> What's it like working with Travis? He's, he's amazing. Um, the first day I ever recorded in his studio... I <laughs> couldn't keep those vocals because I was so shaky. I was like, oh, my God, it's Travis Barker, and I'm, like, singing in front of him. <laughs> 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 but, um, no, he's he's incredible. And, like, the more I got to know him, it was, like, he is such a humble and down-to-earth dude. It's insane. Like, sometimes I, I now forget that he's Travis Barker just because of how much of a real human he is. Um, but... He is the nicest guy I've ever met, and he is so insanely smart and knows exactly what he's doing. Um, it's it's crazy, but yeah, he's amazing. Is La Di Die the only song you've done with him? Yeah. For now. <laughs> for now. Like, are you writing actively still, like, for future projects, knowing that this EP's, at, like, almost ready to go? Oh, yeah, like, in a, in a few weeks when my producer comes back in, Town. I'm like going album mode. Really? And I'm just ready to just keep going. Um, but I don't know. I just, I need to s stay busy in creating music. That way, like, I, I keep my feet on the ground and I'm like, I know exactly. I'm like motivated and I know what I have to do and I'm not like distracted. What about live shows? Have you given them any thought? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I have, um, there's a talks. There's <laughs> there's <Good job. laughs> there's there's talks about it, and I'm excited. You know, um, soon I'll I'm going to start doing like rehearsals and like even seeing like a movement coach and all this stuff. I'm taking everything seriously. I do like weekly vocal lessons. Like I I'm excited. Wow. Yeah. So tour potentially. Potentially in the future. I hope so. <laughs> Amazing. Are you going to pop up at any of these uh, MGK Jaden shows? I, I know I'll be there to support. I don't know if <laughs> if I'll be ready to perform like in front of like thousands and thousands of people. Why not? I mean, has uh, Jaden hasn't really ever performed in front of that many people, right? I don't know. Not that many. There you go. You got to like, just get up there and wing it. See what happens. Yeah. 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 I mean, you're going to have to figure it out eventually. <laughs> I know. <laughs> we had um, Trisha Paytas on here the other day. We're not going to talk about Trisha Paytas, but we were talking about influencers and TikTokers that have turned musicians, and she was talking about how you and Jaden are, like, two people that she actually enjoys and thinks, like, you guys are going to have real big, successful music careers. Oh, my God. I love that. Well, I would like to just say that I've been <laughs> saying for freaking what what feels like forever that y'all are going to be selling out stadiums eventually. I really do think that. I, I, I mean, the, the scene's back, baby, and it feels good. <laughs> yeah, I hope so. I hope so. I mean, like, I plan on doing this for the rest of my life. Um, or, I mean, as long as I can walk, you know. But, um, <laughs> but like, I'm just so excited, and I know the future is going to, like, be so crazy. And, like, it's only been a year since I've released Pain and, like, I feel like there's been so many 
changes and like I feel like I've gone so far already in like a year since pain so I mean in five years like who knows who knows <laughs> imagine yeah. one year from now I yeah. know I know I'll, I'll I don't mm. I'll be 20 Ugh. really does that scare you a little bit I get it I like the teens <sighs> I don't even remember <laughs> what it was like back there but I mean 20 scares me 21 doesn't I cannot wait for that but <sighs> Yeah. What about 27? <laughs> well, I'll be dead. Stop it. <laughs> oh, no, so Joe, no, no. We're reference. not joining the I'm 27 club. Stop it. That was like, <laughs> I, had a, I talked about, I had a real fear about that in my own life. And I would talk about it with my therapist and they literally thought I was insane. That's so funny. No, actually, everyone actually thinks I sold my soul to the devil because of Lottie Die and that lyric. I'll be dead at 27. Um, Who writes that lyric? <laughs> She does. <laughs> you? Well, you know, like, there's, like, writers and stuff, but, like, everything, it's it's actually funny because before Lottie died, I actually, no, after Lottie died, I, I just like trolling <laughs> low-key sometimes. Like, I was going to make a song called Sold because everyone, like, thought I really sold my soul to the devil, and it was going to be spelled S-O-U-L-D. Oh, wow, that's good. And it was going to be, like, some, like, crazy stuff. Like, lyrics were going to be, like, the ritual and stuff. But I had no idea what, what that even is. You know, I was just like making up in my head. It was like, what sounds cool? Ooh, like draw my name in like blood or something. I don't even know. But like, I just like trolling people. And also, too, which is very interesting, 27 is like the average age um, of death for women with BPD, which is something that I have. So it's crazy. I do think that I will live till I'm like 107. Don't worry. I'm not going anywhere uh, to all the haters that <laughs> tell me to. Eh. But yeah, it's very interesting. And then there also was like a um, Nirvana um, play in there and like Kurt and stuff. So it, it was a lot of play on words. There's a lot of people in that 27 club. A lot. Isn't it? I don't even know if it's a thing, though. I mean, like, what if it's just a coinky dink? It is, and then he can't use white <laughs> lighters, okay? Yeah. Oh. Knock on wood. You use white lighters? I don't know. Every now and then. No. I forgot about it's that. The one. No, it's it's the aesthetic. The <laughs> aesthetic of death. Get that out of here. <laughs> God, oh, oh. <laughs> I'll stop. I'll I'm gonna, stop. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna ship you some holy water. You leave me your address. Oh my God, God. speaking of lighters, that's right. I know you're, you got a lot of people here, but I saw you smoking cigarettes the other day, and I don't really know you, but I was gonna oh, tell no. you to stop that. <laughs> okay, what's better, smoking one cig yeah. like twice a day, or hitting the vape all day? Every second. Okay. Because like, what kind of vape know, are you hitting? Some like some big thing. I don't even know, but you know they stop. The you know the jewels they like stop the the flavored pods. So I was like, crap. Now I have to go to puffs. They stopped selling the puffs. Now they're all fake. Yeah. And I was like, crap. I gotta go to bang. So now I'm hitting oh, like, you're these doing... bang puffs. Oh my gosh. But I know my they're friends, terrible for me. My friends hit the bangs. Yeah, but they're good. Oh my god, apple ice. So sorry. No, I'm not promoting it. But like. I just have a true addiction, and a lot of, like, I really don't promote but it. But what are I you think... addicted to? Are you addicted to the actual physical action of hitting it? Are you addicted to the feeling that it gives you? Let's break this down. I do think that, one, I am addicted to nicotine, 100%. Um, I mean, it's built to be addictive. It makes sense. Yeah. Two, I think it's the satisfaction of the inhale <laughs> and the exhale I don't know what it is, but I've tried quitting. Um, I actually quit like four days ago, and I went one day without hitting it. That's a start. The next day, I went absolute bonkers, <laughs> crazy. Um, for yeah. I didn't, I did not really like know why. Could be my mental health, but I do blame it on me not hitting the puff. Uh, I think I was going insane, sweating at night, and. Yeah, it's hard. It's so real. then I try to transfer over to SIGs. That way it's easier because I don't like those. And I have that smell OCD. Oh, yeah. Cigarettes yeah, and that's it not bothers me. It's so linger. it's like I, I, if I do that, then maybe I'll do it less and then I'll get over it. 
That's positive thinking. Uh, you know what? My yeah. friend Craig <laughs> has done the same thing, right? He would smoke jewels, and then he gave up the jewels, and now he, like, limits his cigarette usage. Yeah. Slow and steady is going to win yeah. this race. But it's so ironic because e-cigs were created to help people quit smoking I know. cigarettes. I know. I and know. now it's like, now they're the bigger problem. I think they knew. 100%. Yeah. It was just shifting yeah. from one to the other, yeah. baby. They played us like fiddles. They they really did. And I yeah. Those things are addicting, and those bang energies are all the rage. I have a lot of friends who hit them. <laughs> uh, ironically, when an ex-boyfriend of yours tried to steal my friends at a party on Saturday night. Doesn't surprise me. Yeah. Uh, literally, we had yeah. to chase after him for it. <laughs> I mean, my friend was like, you know, he's also addicted, so he couldn't let his vape go. <laughs> um. Yeah, actually, see, yeah, it's at parties, it's so easy though, because you could be like, oh, let me hit it. And then, like, go by. then someone will come up to that person that you're hitting that puff, and you're like, okay, and yeah. then just like walk away. Um, he thought he was so smooth. Yeah, but I don't do that. I'm a good person. <laughs> you don't steal strangers <laughs> that you just met to vape? No, I also don't hit strangers' vapes. I don't know if that's just me, but, like, I got to know you. And, like, I need, like, a list of, like, your physical records <laughs> before. relationships. <laughs> um, before I hit your vape. But, um, yeah, that's why I just try to, I try to have my own. I feel like everyone else is in mine. Wow. You have, you have class and decorum, so. We love that. <laughs> what are you um, thinking? It seems like you have a very addictive personality. Is that true? Yes, very okay. addictive. And is is that a? I mean, I think that can be a good thing and a bad thing. But how has that affected you? Not in like the best ways. I think I I don't really know how to explain it. But like, I could be addicted to a person, addicted to <laughs> my mom's here. <laughs> addicted, <Your mom's. laughs> addicted to. Like nicotine, um, anything that is something that I really never felt before, I usually cling on to it and I get very addicted to it. Um, I'm also very impulsive, so that makes things worse. But there have, like, I've had, like, positive addictions, like, with music, you know. Um, so I guess that's, like, good. But it's, it's something I'm working on. Thank God for my therapist. Uh, yeah, I think when you get on stage and you perform in front of thousands of people, it's going to be a feeling like you, it's going to be another feeling that you've never felt before. No, yeah. Uh, I Jaden just had his first show in Vegas not too long ago, and we all went. And this kid looked as soon as he got off stage looked like he was tripping on Molly. Yeah. Um, insane. Could not smile. Um. I could not stop smiling for, like, three hours after. And he was so excited for me to experience that. Mm. And I hope that that's a feeling that I love and I don't ever want to go away because that's, like, a good addiction, you know? Um, So, I mean, I'm excited. And that, like, motivated me to, like, like, okay, come on. Like, we have to start performing. yeah. Yeah. Do you get that feeling when you perform on, like, Kimmel or any of those late-night shows? Mm. No. It's different, dude. <laughs> it's so different. I don't know, I don't know what it is. Um, and you're performing to I nobody. get anxiety, insane anxiety, when I do those, like, those shows, especially with the Kimmel and Ellen because they were pre-recorded because of COVID. Mm-hmm. So it wasn't, like, a crowd, you know. It was just a camera. And cameras give me... The worst anxiety. Yeah, it's more about aesthetic and like yeah. angles. It's not and really like, about quality. I'm worried about how I look and like if I like totally look awkward or if I make like the wrong move or like, you know, um, I. It's like my anxiety just like distracts any feeling that I could possibly feel during that moment. Um, but I do think that like performing in front of people will be different because there is something about feeding off of other people's energy. And, like, looking at people singing back your lyrics, I think, are insane. Um, but, yeah. How many songs are on the EP? Seven. Seven. Yeah, I'm, yeah, seven. I'm terrible with numbers. It all, it used to be, there used to be ten. Oh, wow. But it's seven, and it's a perfect seven. Will, seven, seven, seven. Lucky will the other number. four go to the album or no? No. Hmm? Will the other four go to the album? Um... 
It's three. Three? Seven? Oh my gosh. Yeah, three. God, I was so confident in my math. <laughs> I'm a moron. Sorry, what did you say? <laughs> the other three songs that I, got cut. There was ten, and now there's oh. seven, right? So, one, two. Oh, no. There we go. So, I was so confused. We're, yeah, I suck at numbers. <laughs> Here are these three. <laughs> um, I think they're going to say in my... My lovely archives folder. Um, but I don't know. I honestly think that they might come out. Mm. Uh, maybe one day. It, it all depends. Um, but I also don't think that maybe as singles, maybe possibly. Um, on my album, though, I think I'd want to tell a different story. So I'm very like. You have eras, and you stick to the eras. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I like, like, when I start a project, I like starting fresh. Yeah. Um, because, like, you're in that moment, and, like, you're motivated, and, like, you... It's it's just... It makes more sense of it, and it sounds more cohesive, and... Yeah. I just work better that way. When is this EP coming? This fall. Oh, my gosh. It's only June. I know. What What the... Let's just leak it. You know, I'll leak it. I'll leak it on SoundCloud. <laughs> Don't say that. <laughs> I know. Oh, my God. My label will kill me. I'm joking. <laughs> but, um, yeah. But there is an earlier surprise. Look back. <laughs> <laughs> There's an earlier surprise before the EP that is on the EP that will come out before. Which is usually how it works. Any collaborations? On the EP? Yeah. No. Just because it is so personal to me. And I feel like no one really could help me tell the story other than myself. Hell yeah. Um, you know, and I feel like it would just get, like, too lost in the sauce. But I'd be down for some remixes. Mm. I think it'd be dope. Put it out there. Yeah. Would yeah. you say <laughs> that you are in a much better place right now than you were when you were writing this EP? I would say so. Uh, I was kind of still healing from a lot of stuff that um, helped create the EP. Um, and, you know, I was using it to cope. Um, every song I use is to cope. But um, it, it's helped me. And I'm also, like, personally in a, a much better and healthier position um and I'm happy for once you know I've never I feel like I've never really been able to truly say that I'm happy until now so um yeah is that everything from like life relationship career all the above yeah Mm -hmm. everything um it's kind of crazy but I just feel like I'm more motivated and more at peace and I have some clarity as to where you know I want my life to go and my music to go and um I'm just very like happy like I I hold a lot of joy and I've never felt joy before I really don't think so until now where do you think that comes from like joy yeah I don't know happiness but like is it attached (laughs) to something in your life that's there today that wasn't there before? <laughs> I, <laughs> I mean, like, I don't know. <laughs> uh, what is going on? I feel like I'm, like, at a, a, a school think, like, lunch table. I feel like we no. all, like, know what we're talking about, but nobody wants to say it because we got an email saying don't say it, but, like, <laughs> sitting in front of us. I don't know what's going on. I feel like is everybody it, else is in on the secret that I'm I don't even, on. I don't even know what you know. <laughs> I just, everything is just so amazing. You know, I feel like I, everything, it's not, it's not really just one thing. You know, it's, my life has just come to a point where, like, I can now see the progress in all of the hard work that I put in when it comes to, like, the progress, the hard work that I put in with myself and, like, getting better mentally. I've seen it. Um, music, it's been 
an insane journey and just like life itself I feel like I just am like happy to wake up in the morning and like do my thing you know she was saying the last time you saw her, she was crying on a rooftop. We're not there anymore. <laughs> Hell yeah. Yeah, no tears today. <laughs> wow, we've covered a lot here. You got to listen to Counting Crimes. There's a link in the description <laughs> below. Yeah. I love you guys. It's always so fun. I always, I always get nervous coming in. Why? But I'm like, no, like, it, when I, like, do any other interviews, but I'm like, yeah, I'm going to talk to my boy Zach. It's going to be fun. I'm going to have a great day. Yeah, you got tattoos this morning. <laughs> 10 a.m. Can I ask why you went... From the tattoo chair to therapy, back to the tattoo chair. <laughs> Finish. Oh, I, I mean, I didn't know if she like yeah. got inspired. Well, I wanted, I wanted more. So I had like an hour to get tattooed before my therapy, and I wanted a bunch more still. So I was like, stay there. I'm gonna go talk to Karen, and then I'll be back. Um, but yeah. <laughs> you just can't do therapy and get tatted at the same time. I think, like, the bzzz, well, I'm like, I had a bad day yesterday, you know. It's, <laughs> it it would have been, like, really <laughs> difficult, but. Is, is there a goal? Are you going to do a sleeve? Yeah, I'm starting to, yeah, I do want a sleeve. And I, next time, we're starting my back. Mm. Um, yeah, I just, I love them. What kind of sleeve do you want? Do you want, like, it to be connected? Do you want them to be scattered? Yeah, I like the scattered look and, yes. like, the small tattoos. I think it's it's cool. Um, I'm also a very small girl, so I feel like if I had, like, big, bulky, like, tattoos on me, it would look a little weird. I get but that. I like, like, the delicate, like, tiny tattoos look. Beautiful. I look forward to seeing the uh, sleeve evolve over time. Me too. Just like you, <laughs> you will also be evolving as a human being. Yes, you yes. Have, we'll do it. We'll do a tattoo update, tattoo track every time I come back. You have an open invitation here whenever you want. <laughs> Nessa Barrett, everybody. Woo! Thank you. Hey, beautiful human. Thanks for watching our full interview. But I get it. Like a full interview is a lot. So we got a clips channel. We don't expect you to watch the full thing anymore. So we just gave you the highlights. Please subscribe and uh notifications, and all that stuff. Okay, cool. I love you.